you know about living in the hood? I just been half the ride over here trying to convince him not to say dynamite. And buy property for no money down. Yo, what's up? Carlton, what the hell are you wearing? Yo, this? Carlton, you look like a pirate. Yo, stop fucking. You know this gay is chill. But why are you talking like that? Yo, how you playing me, Prince? What? Are you dissing me? Come on, man, stop it! Hey, Pretty Girl Club. So this is a quick video. I wanted to talk about how I co-switched to fit in growing up. Because I grew up around majority like white people and Asian and Hispanic communities. I didn't grow up in the hood. I was very sheltered. Um, I was a military brat, so I lived on base a lot. A majority of my life, I lived on a base. I went, I'm, a, I'm a pastor's kid, so I was very, very sheltered, right? I couldn't watch Pokemon. I couldn't trick or treat. I couldn't wear certain clothes, and I couldn't do a lot of things growing up. So I was very, very sheltered. So I noticed when I would go to the hood, people would act different than me. And I would get picked on because I acted white. Because I acted and talked white. That's what they would say. Because I talk proper English. I talk, you know, I don't use slang in my vocabulary. I I don't know why they think I, I talk white. I think I talk normal. I talk like everybody else around me, but in my environment, everybody else around me wasn't was white or not not black, not hood black. Because even the black people who lived in the suburbs act talk like me. So I noticed when I would go to the hood when I was younger, I would act hood just so I can fit in. And I know I didn't. It wasn't genuine. It was just me trying to code switch to fit in. That's something I would naturally do when I was around hood people hood females because I just wanted to make a friend and fit in and I only went to the hood for a couple of times to live there like for like three months and around this time I remember code switching a lot like faking it faking the funk faking that I was hood so I could fit in or make a friend or something because I, I was tired of getting picked on for being myself so I was like if I act like them then I'll get, I'll be the I'll be cool or something because I always wanted to be you know the cool kid but I didn't necessarily grow up as the cool kid. I'm just recently becoming like a popular person at my job. Like I'm very popular at my job, and it's it's you know it's as an adult my pretty privilege my, my pretty privilege has really gone up, especially after puberty. Like before puberty, I didn't have it as much until after puberty when I started wearing makeup and experimenting with my own clothes and stuff like that and dressing myself how I want to dress and wear my hair how I want to wear my hair my pretty privilege went up as I got older to the point where now I feel like because my job is basically like a high school for grown-ups to be honest and I am honestly the popular pretty girl because that's how people treat me and I'm just keeping it a buck people have told me this so I'm not just saying it like, my experience at work is crazy. It's so crazy. Pretty privilege is really real. I remember one of the first times when I recognized that I was different was when I had to have been, like, I think I was in the fifth grade for sure. And I remember we went to go visit my grandparents for a little bit. They live in, like, a hood area compared to where I grew up, which is more suburbs. I lived in the suburbs. And so this was around fifth grade. I remember, because I used to listen to a lot of white girl music. Like back then I used to like, I don't know if y'all remember that group Play. There was this group called Play. I used to, look, I used to like Avril Lavigne. And I had like, you know, white girl music. And I remember we went to a gas station and I saw an Avril Lavigne CD. I, was, I told my mom, I was like, I want to get the CD. Can I get it? Can I get it? And she was like, okay. And then we went to go check the CD out. And I remember the cash lady at the cash register looking at the CD funny. was like looking at my mom and us funny. Like, y'all sure again want this CD? Y'all know what this is? I remember her saying something along those lines. 
to the point where I still remember it because I was just like, what's wrong with, you know? And that's when I first learned like, it's not okay for white people or that it's not okay for black people to listen to white people music and that whole thing. That's when it made it not okay in my memory. So that was one of my first memories of that. But I even code switch when I'm around other races, like Mexican people, I tend to code switch. I tend to act like I have a broken accent or something. I, I kind of naturally code switch. And I don't know if it's a people pleasing thing or not, because I have a people pleasing issue that I'm trying to work on. But it's almost like I naturally code switch and I'm trying to change that. Because I'm just now finding my identity of who I really, truly am. And I'm just hitting my 30s. And I'm finally finding my own identity because my identity was taken by my, either my mom, how she wanted me to dress growing up, from boyfriends, how they wanted me to dress. And so once I started to get, create my own identity and started standing up for myself and decentering men and stopped caring what they think and started doing what I like, then, you know, that's when I learned, you know, code switching is th isn't cool. I shouldn't do that. People should like me from who I am. And once I did that, people did like me for who I am. That's when my confidence, like, went through the roof. Like I've been telling y'all, this past year, I went through a lot of shadow work, a lot of healing. And so I'm in a whole lot of better, I'm in a better place mentally than I ever have been in my whole life. Because I grew up with social anxiety and depression, as y'all know and body dysmorphia, but this last year, I did some true shadow work, a year of therapy. Every Thursday for an entire year, I went to therapy, mental health therapy. And I'm telling you, therapy works. I feel better. And not only just therapy, but Exoticals United's channels helped me to really see the core issue of what was going on. Because a white man in an office can only, can't tell me nothing about no colorism issues. But I grew up in, um, you know, with colorism issues so you know to finally find the root cause of my issues is because my mom was a colorist towards light-skinned people and so she took it out on me and then all the girls that I tried to fit in with that were darker than me would pick on me and just trying to figure out why it was these particular type of girls even though I thought I was black too so all of this stuff just started to make sense as I got older you know, it's, it's helped me to understand a lot of these issues about myself. So, yeah, hold switching is not cool. Be yourself. People will love you anyway. Have confidence in who you are. And decenter men so you can do you. Because that's really the big picture here. Decentering men. If you're in a relationship, that just means not to make him the center of your whole life. You know, take the time to do your own hobbies. Do what you want to do. Instead of building his career, try to work on your own with the, or your own dreams, what you want to do. You know, don't just help him build his dreams. Build yours, too. Start a YouTube channel. Get some side revenue. Get some side revenue. So you can build. You can, you know, take care of your, ma your pretty privileged maintenance. It's just when you take care of you and you treat you like you're number one, you'll be all right. But I just wanted to get on here real quick. Have any of y'all code switched to fit in in the hood with hood with people from the hood, especially if you didn't grow up in the hood? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you for listening. Very, very dark, it's, it's very, very dark. And my mother was very, 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 I thought she was a white woman. So that's the problem right there. My mama was like, I did tease her. I was like, you white and I'm gonna get some DNA on you because you're lying. Um, but now that we're talking about it, maybe that is the thing. I'm trying to be too black sometimes. I've done the reverse thing. Because of my mother being so fair and people thinking that she was white, um, because of being teased, people come in my house and they say, why you got so much black heart? Why you got so much Africa around you? I never thought about it. But I think I was trying to make up for not being black enough, you know? I realize um, that being mixed is both a curse and a blessing. It's a curse because you don't really belong anywhere, but it's a blessing because you get to blend in everywhere. It, it amazes me how race is subjective to some people. And I was just told recently that I'm not a real black person. I'm not in part black person. It doesn't matter what my granddaddy did or what he was about. I, am, I don't know anything about the black experience and I have no right because my skin color doesn't match. I was led to believe if I was somebody else, my life would be better. Yeah. It, sorry, it cheated me.
that is being who I am. And I'm now almost 40, figuring that out. I do remember one incident where I just been I just been bombarded with people telling me that I wasn't black, and you know, as a compliment. And I went to my dad and I was like, Dad, am I not black enough? And I just remember he started to cry and he was um, so emotional. Uh, and he just told me, you know, you are black enough. You are all the black that you need to be. You are beautiful. You are smart. You are caring and charismatic. And don't let anyone tell you any different. 